when you get those dopamine rushes um, and then when you have to go through the withdrawals mm -hmm. of not being able to have mm -hmm. it, uh, it's going to affect their mood, right? right? And so you begin to, that affects overall functioning. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so their ability to concentrate, to focus, to sleep, you know, because they're wired and they're thinking right. about this game and they're, right. you know, and so, um, again, I'm not trying to say that gaming in and of itself is all bad. Um, right. I do think that there, it's fun. It's mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it. It's an escape, you know, whenever I have time to do it. But, um, you know, at the same time, the concern is, is that they are doing it to the point where, um, you know, when it comes to other things that require quiet time and less of that quick response, um, you know, reading a book, you know, sitting down with like an actual book and right, turning uh -huh. the pages uh -huh. and right. sitting in that stillness is really difficult, right? I 100% agree with parents doing their research on knowing their child. You know that child from the day of birth. You've, you've mm -hmm. seen every change, every um, milestone they've met and every milestone they've not met. So you are the expert on your child. So I advocate for knowing, uh, researching what the needs of your child and what the school district or the law says that these are the things that would help your child. You come to that meeting with those things um, and present them to the IEP team. Now, the team, uh, you know, for parents who are new to this, is made up of a special education teacher, a general education teacher, um, an administrator, um, any type of specialist. If there is, if the child has uh, speech or language issues or uh, behavioral issues, they. Um, might be a behavioral specialist um, and a diagnostician. And um, it's the team of, of professionals along with the parent and the child, if possible, um, that make the decisions. But the parent is a very crucial part of the team. Yes. And the parent has, the law says that the parent has a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Now the parent, you know, you can't bring this and say my child needs this and this is what the, the district has to do Be, but the team considers what you bring to the table according to Carol Black if you're praising for intelligence um, it gives students a, a self-confidence but it's short-lived because then they believe the expectation is that they are never going to fail that they know mm -hmm. everything and then they're concerned about how others view them and then they're not willing to take risks in hey I've got to know everything so if I take this risk and they find out I don't know then that's a negative view of me and am I really as smart as as they say I am mm. whether uh, rather if you're praising for effort you're commending students for the processes they use that they're engaged if they're persevering if they're using strategies if they're going back and reflecting and they're willing to put in work. It, it helps them to take on new challenges and it, they get the gain the confidence and the understanding that, hey, I may not know everything, but I'm willing to find out. I'm gonna be confident in it. If I make mistakes along the way, hey, it's it, I've at least tried. Going back to the kids that are most vulnerable, I think a lot of it too has to do with families. Uh, kids that, you know, don't have good relationships with their families, mm -hmm. uh, kids that, uh, kids are very vulnerable to bullying if they're bullied at home. Uh, siblings, uh, you know, some family members in the home that aren't very nice, that, you know, so if a kid feels like they have no control and they feel attacked and they have low self-esteem, like was what was said, then they are more vulnerable not just to be bullied, but to be a bully. <laughs> Well, all scholarships are like a lottery. You got to be in it to win it. But when we're talking community and we're talking local, then your chances to win are a lot greater. Right. So when there are federations and chambers and different organizations that are offering locally, you definitely need to apply. When it's your colleges that are offering, you definitely need to apply. The bigger scholarships 
the opportunity is still there. They still have to award somebody, has somebody the money, the money right. especially if students apply. This is why for the Tall Kids Scholarship, a young lady that was 5'2", won. This still blows me away. <laughs> Locally, Jess increases your chances to win, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply for the larger scholarships as well. Right.